Hello, this is Brett Lonsdale and I'm here with uh, with Sandy Ucia from Lightning Tools and also in Lightning. And uh, Sandy is a Microsoft Business Applications MVP uh, for, for Microsoft and has been awarded that for, uh, for the last two years now. Uh, she is a technical evangelist for Lightning Tools and uh, and also a co-founder with me on a company called Enlightening. And you can go to uh, enlighteningtech.com uh, to find out about what we do and, and that's all about uh, helping people and, and coaching people to uh, to build solutions through the Power Platform. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we did a webinar on getting started with Power Apps, and uh, hopefully a lot of you were, were on that webinar. And uh, today we're going to continue uh, with that uh, discussion, and um, it's going to be all on Power Automate. So uh, Sandy, I'm going to hand over to you and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, just to also mention that if you do have any questions, we will be uh, building in time for that at the very end as well. Uh, you'll be able to post your questions if you like um, through the uh, through the webinar, and I'll do my best to answer them. And if I can't, I'll wait for uh, for Sandy to uh, to answer those uh, at the at the very end, and I'll be reading them out. So um, yeah, over to you, Sandy. Thank you. Thanks, Brett, and welcome everybody. I'm glad glad that you're here and wanting to learn about Power Automate. So, uh, just a tiny bit about myself. Brett already mentioned uh, what I do. I uh, just also wanted to mention that I'm co-host uh, along with Daniel Laskowitz from the Netherlands of the Flow Pro Show webcast, um, which has a little bit more bearing on today's session about Power Automate. Um, that's a mostly monthly webcast where we talk about what's happened, what's new in Power Automate, like new connections or new features and then we often have a guest from Microsoft who will demonstrate some of the things that are coming in Power Automate which is usually pretty exciting or explain things that already exist um, and do some demos and things like that so uh, tune into that that's available on our YouTube channel and I have a link to that in our resources for this session but what we're going to do today is follow pretty much the same structure as we did last time for the Power Apps webinar. Uh, so we'll just jump right in and talk about why you may be interested in Power Automate. So this webinar is really just about if you're brand new to Power Automate and just getting started and look at, you know, you've heard about it and you wonder if it might help you. Um, so the reasons that you might look at Power Automate are mainly to automate business processes. Microsoft's current tagline on the Power Automate homepage is to take care of what's important and automate the rest. I guess I take a little bit of issue with that in that I think um, you want to also automate important things, <laughs> but I think what they really mean by that is that uh, you can automate a certain number of business processes leaving yourself to take care of other important things that only a human can do. So if it's something that you find yourself doing over and over the same task and um, even if it spans multiple platforms, uh, so that's kind of part of Power Automate's um, uh, main draw is that you know, for something like Outlook, you can have set Outlook rules and that'll do things with your emails that come into your inbox and sort them in different ways or alert you and, and things like that with rules. But Power Automate lets you take that sort of thing a step further and actually do other actions in other services. So anything really that you find yourself doing again and again and you wish that it could either be automated because it's just a you know, time-consuming task that you don't have to do, um, you shouldn't have to do, <laughs> or if it's something that you find yourself doing where maybe you don't do it all that often, uh, but it's a, a set series of steps and it would be good, you know, each time it comes up that you have to do it, you have to go back and remember, now how did I do that the last time? So that might be a good candidate for automation too, where you can set up an automation the way, thing, the way it should be done and uh, let that take place whenever that, you know, whenever something occurs that causes that to, to need to happen without you having to remember each time or go back to some kind of written instructions as to what is supposed to happen when, when this thing happens. So those are some reasons for wanting to automate things. 
uh, you're generally solving some kind of business challenges, but it could also be personal productivity. So um, there are a good many uh, Power Automate templates, which we'll kind of take a little bit of a look at that can help you with just personal productivity, uh, not just on your business challenges. And just like Power Apps, uh, the idea of Power Automate is to empower you who know best what uh, needs to happen in your business requirements um, to be able to create those workflows yourself, those automations yourself, without having to go to a developer. So Power Automate specifically is a similar to Power Apps, which was a no-code slash low-code app designer. This is a workflow designer that allows you to design workflows with a fairly intuitive user interface without needing to know any programming language or code of any kind. It's also part of Microsoft's Power Platform, which we talked about last time. So that is uh, Power Apps to be able to um, bring to gather data that's often what it's used for or uh, or display data to people and then Power Automate to automate those things. Power BI, which we'll be talking about in our next webinar, uh, to do analytics on the data that you've collected. And then Power Virtual Agents is the fourth member of the Power Platform, which is the um, chatbot, way to design chatbots. And also similar to Power Apps, there are a number of different types of Power Automate flows. So Power Automate used to be called Microsoft Flow, in case you weren't aware of that, and about a year ago, uh, Microsoft changed the name to Power Automate to kind of fit in better with the whole Power platform, <clears throat> all the different names. Uh, but the things that you build, the workflows that you build in Power Automate are still called flows. So there are several different kinds of kind of basic flows, and this is what we're mostly going to focus on today. Uh, those are automated flows, which are ones that are started by some kind of trigger, like something happens in some service that you're subscribed to, uh, but that could include any Microsoft 365 things like an email comes in or an item is created in a SharePoint list. Those would be automated flows, and then you want something to happen uh, based on that trigger. They could be instant flows, which are ones that you start, and those can be started with either a button on your mobile app, because uh, there's a, a flow mobile app, or they could be ones that are started based on, like you've selected an item in a SharePoint list, and then that uh, gets started. Or they could be scheduled flows, which lets you put a make a flow happen on a recurrence basis, and we'll, we'll take a look at how you would set something like that up. There are also completely different types of flows. So one is a UI flow um, that uh, kind of came out about a year ago, and that was part of the reason that uh, the whole name was changed, because it's really sort of a different type of a flow, but it's still included as automation and that has a lot uh, that's also called robotic process automation they're mostly synonyms um, but it has more to do with being able to automate uh, legacy systems mostly so things where you they are not an online service or it does not have a, an api that you can access uh, you could use robotic process automation to basically capture what happens on your screen as far as like filling in a form in some old software that you have and then that gets recorded and then from that point it can be automated in with you know some trigger like um, you know maybe a an email comes in that has an invoice attached but you've got some really old uh, invoice processing system that you have to enter it into or like an accounting system and so you could set up a UI flow to trigger so the regular flow would trigger on that email coming in with the invoice attached but then you could um, use the UI flow to then to capture the information out of the invoice and enter it into your legacy system. We're not going to cover that but I just wanted to 
point out to you that that exists. And uh, so that's, if that's something of interest, there are lots of resources online about how that works. And then business process flows are have more to do with dynamics, uh, uh, customer relationship management system. Um, and that lets you uh, model business processes right within dynamics and common data service. And that too, we're not going to look at, um, cause that's a little beyond the scope of uh, getting started video. Uh, and then new is uh, Dataverse for Teams, which includes uh, Power Apps, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents uh, right within Teams. And we're also not going to look at that, but um, we'll probably take a, a little look at that when we cover Teams in a few weeks from now. And then as before, I've got a whole resources page. So uh, since you are registered for the webinar, you'll be getting a copy of this slide deck, which has all these links in it. Uh, so basically we've got Microsoft links again, uh, the documentation for Power Automate, the connectors, that's the same list uh, as for Power Apps. Um, the pricing and licensing is the same link actually. And then just like Power Apps, there's a Power Automate community that's run by Microsoft where you can ask questions and get answers from both Microsoft uh, people and community members who are constantly on those forums answering questions. There is a learn path for Power Automate and uh, Microsoft has, I already, already had mentioned the Power Platform YouTube, YouTube channel, but uh, that includes a fairly new playlist called Automate It. And that's got a, a lot in there about um, sort of more enterprise level Power Automate solutions, I would say. Um, they talk a lot about the UI flows in particular. Uh, which are more commonly used by large enterprise organizations who have these legacy software systems. There's a Power Automate YouTube channel, and I would definitely recommend, I would say most of all, uh, John Levesque's YouTube channel. He is the um, pro product evangelist, I think is his current title for Power Automate at Microsoft, and he has a different Power Automate tutorial video at least once a week, sometimes more, and often has guests from the community who are demonstrating different things. So he's got a whole whole playlist of beginner, intermediate, advanced uh, level Power Automate videos. And uh, so that I would definitely check that one out. And then under the community side, we've got again, your global user groups, um, the Flow Pro show, as I mentioned, which is uh, my own show mine and Daniel's, and then, oops, I the, forgot to delete the Power Apps monthly community call while there, that's a bonus. And then um, we have several community uh, resources that focus on Power Automate. Uh, Peter Fenstra has, doesn't do videos so much, but so that's a link to his blog. And like almost any question that I ever have about, or people have about Power Automate, he's got a blog post about it, <laughs> I would have to say. So uh, that's a really good resource for things about like syntax of OData filters and just, yeah, almost anything. Um, Serge Luca, uh, that's a link to his blog. Uh, where he has a lot of things about different patterns in Power Automate. So approval patterns and different ways of, of getting um, flows to do what you want them to do. Uh, John Liu is also known as the Flow Ninja. He, he does some really crazy things with flow, kind of hacky things sometimes having more to do with code, but um, also um, some pretty pretty cool stuff on his blog. Uh, Daniel, as I mentioned, is my co-host on Flow Pro Show, and he um, has a lot of videos about UI flows especially. Um, Matt Weston, I would say, focuses on kind of small uh, Power Automate tutorials, and Eliza Benitez focuses mostly on dynamics. So her uh, videos talk a lot about the connections to common data service and using Power Automate with dynamics. So uh, different resources for different reasons, but I think they would all be really helpful to you. So we're gonna go into our demo now. So we're just going to take a look, first of all, at the uh, Power Automate user interface. So what we get here, so when you go to flow.microsoft.com uh, or Power 
automate.com, I think would also take you here, but I'm just used to doing the flow.microsoft.com. Um, that takes you to this home page after you've signed in. So you sign in with your regular, just like Power Apps we talked about last time, you sign in with your um, Microsoft 365 credentials, and you should probably by default be able to access Power Automate with those credentials that's included in your Microsoft 365 subscription normally. Um, so unless your organization has specifically turned it off, then uh, you should be able to get here and create um, Power Automate flows for yourself and for your business. So uh, to begin with on the home screen, you can start with a template if you want to. So there are lots of templates available. They're, they've just got a couple really popular ones here. Uh, for example, this save email attachments to OneDrive for Business. That's one that I have active on all of my tenants that I work in because uh, what that'll do is any email that comes in, it'll take any attach, if it has an attachment, it'll take it and save it in your OneDrive, which makes it more searchable through the Microsoft 365 search. Uh, and that way you don't have to go sorting back through emails all the time if you, you know, you know you got an attachment from somebody. So to use one of these templates, so it's just got these four here, but um, I can also go to the templates page over on the left. And this will show me all the hundreds and hundreds of templates that exist. Uh, so if you know you want to do something having to do with SharePoint, you could type in SharePoint in the search and just see the SharePoint ones, or you could use these different categories, um, you know, things that have to do with approvals, things that have to do with email or events and so on. So you and you can sort them in different ways. And a lot of these have been produced by Microsoft, you can see by Microsoft. But then uh, there are also a fair number that have been produced by the community. Here's one by the community. So if you come up with a flow that you feel would be useful to other people and it's not already on here, you can submit it to Microsoft and they might include it <clears throat> in the template gallery. But I would say just as you know, when you're getting started with Power Automate, that this might be a good place to start because maybe quite possibly something that you want to automate has already been automated by somebody or Microsoft. And so you could search for a template related to that. And even if it doesn't do exactly what you want, then you can take and tweak it. And if, and in addition, you can also learn from it so you can see what uh, Microsoft or the or whoever did to create that template you know what actions they're using and and do something similar so to use one of these templates you just click on it and then it'll check your uh, connections so since I've already um, connected to Outlook and OneDrive it's already got green check marks there but if I hadn't yet done anything so if you're doing this just new you would have to create both of those connections even though you know it's the same login as you're currently logged in with and then when you click create flow then it'll just go ahead and create that flow in your environment so it'll be become one of your flows that does this same thing. In my case, it's put a two after it because I already have one in this tenant, but that brings you to the, the flow dashboard for that flow and um, it's already set to running. So uh, if you now get an attachment to an email, then it'll save it to your OneDrive that's in this um, tenant. So that's just that simple. And we'll look a little bit later at, at how, you know, what's going on behind the scenes there. But uh, that's the way to start is from a template. Then you have your connections or connectors rather. So there are, they're up to 418 currently. Um, and these are basically the same connectors as for Power Apps, but um, sometimes there are some variations among them between Power Automate and Power Apps, and each of the, um, the documentation for each connector will explain, it'll show the things that could happen that you can use the connector for in Power Automate and also what you can use them for in Power Apps. So we can look, if we go to the connectors on the side menu or the 
see all 418 either way. Then I can see all the different connectors that exist. So the popular ones they've listed at the top there, which include, you know, some of the Microsoft 365 things like Outlook and OneDrive and SharePoint, but also things that aren't part of Microsoft. So there's like Twitter and uh, all of the Google things are on here. So you can connect to Gmail somewhere in here. Yeah, there's Gmail and Google Calendar, Google Sheets. All of those things are also included. and you notice that some of them have a little premium badge below them and so that means that you would need um, a power automate license of some sort in addition to your the one that comes with microsoft 365 so you'd need a premium license to be able to use some of those um, connectors typically it's ones that are with third-party services uh, but also as you see uh, sql server which is microsoft and azure which is microsoft but in common data service, which is Microsoft, but the, um, I would say the more, uh, the less enterprise uh, type Microsoft connections are all included like Forms and Planner and OneDrive and SharePoint. Um, and then uh, as you see a lot of these, like the recently added ones, the things that they're adding right now are usually coming from the third party vendors. And so those are normally premium connectors to Power Automate. But then there are things like the Google, um, the Gmail and so on and Twitter, which are not premium connectors, even though they're not Microsoft. Uh, but it's, I think in those cases, it's because those are things that people use so much and had been using so much before they kind of initiated the, the premium, <laughs> uh, some premium licensing changes um, that they couldn't really change that back out. So one, so any of these connectors exist, but to use them, what you would need to do is connect to them and create a connection with your login details. So you would need to have some kind of login for each of these uh, connectors to be able to use it. So I can't just go and use Cosmobot, whatever that is, <laughs> uh, because I do not own a license for Cosmobot, so I don't have a login for that. Um, so even if I have a, a Flow Premium license, I can't connect to it without having a login to that service, if that makes sense. But I otherwise, I can use any of those. And if I um, click on any of them, I should have done that while I was there. Like, for example, if I click on the SharePoint one, I can find out all about how to use that connector when it comes up, because it'll let me go to the documentation. Hello. Eventually, it'll let me go to the documentation on that. Um, and so then I could uh, see, you know, what all triggers I can have, what all actions I can use, and, and so on. I'm going to just refresh my whole page here, I think. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, so once I click on one of those connectors, I can, for I think all of them, uh, there's a C documentation link. So I can click on that and that'll take me to the documentation for that connector. And you can see it'll, in the case of SharePoint, there's kind of more to this connector than there is to many other ones because SharePoint is kind of a big complex thing. Um, there's a lot you can do with SharePoint and Power Automate. Uh, so it talks about the connections between it and Power Automate, Power Apps, and Logic Apps, which is um, uh, kind of what Power Automate is built on, Logic Apps. Um, but then it shows things like um, yeah, in-depth things about the connector, um, any kind of limits that there are having to do with that connector, and then you get the whole list of, of actions that you can do in Power Automate specifically. And so you can see there are a lot of things you can do. It explains all about them and you can go to each one and see, you know, like if I want to get an item from a SharePoint list, I click on that and it explains what are the parameters that I need to know. But I don't have to, you know, I don't have to use this and memorize these or something. You'll see that the, um, the triggers and actions right in the designer UI lead you to enter all of this stuff, but it's good to have the reference. I use this a lot um, because just to see, 
what types of data it's looking for and you know what the what exactly you get out of the triggers and out of the uh, the items and so on so it's really really useful to know and there's a, um, a link in the resources slide about um, the uh, connectors reference which takes you to this page that has all of the connectors listed uh, let's see so go back to our home page and so we can do a couple things here. There's an action, so looking over on the left, there's an action items uh, section, and that's where you would see things like approvals, um, or if you have business process flows, they would show up here. Um, approvals is sort of a special kind of an action that's available in Power Automate that lets you um, on approvals, oddly enough. And when you have approvals um, that you need to approve, they'll appear here in this action items section. You'll get an email about it too, whoever is supposed to approve something, uh, but it'll also appear in this approvals dashboard and you can see ones that you've sent or ones that you've already approved and so on. Uh, we'll look at my flows and create just in a minute um, just to kind of go over what's on the left there then there's a data section and that's more to do with common data service so you can go see your entities that exist in cds um, and do any modifying uh, that you need to do from there that takes you just right into cds basically um, ai builder uh, lets you use some um, artificial intelligence with your Power Automate flows. So you can build um, models with the AI builder, but there are some that already are built in. So for example, there's one that will automatically understand receipts. So if part of what you're doing in a flow is um, you have maybe somebody scan a receipt on their mobile device and submit it uh, with a flow, then you can use the AI builder actions to actually scan that, understand you know who the receipt was from, how much it was for, the date, it'll pick up things like that automatically and then save those into wherever you want to save them, SharePoint lists, Excel tables, or whatnot. So those are some pretty interesting features. We're also not going to cover that in a getting started video, but they're there. And then solutions are where you can add Power Automate flows and Power Apps together, and chatbots for that matter, into solutions that then you can um, you know, maybe you're creating these in one environment, um, like a development environment, and you want to move those then to your production environment once they're tested. So that can be done with solutions. And then Learn takes you to the documentation. So we're going to, if we click on Create, if we want to create a new flow, uh, there it says here there are three ways to make a flow, although I count five here, but um, you can, so starting from blank lets you uh, create, well, I guess what they mean is either blank or a template or um, from starting from a connector. I guess that's what they mean. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you can start with an automated flow. So that has a trigger and that would be when something happens, then it will, um, then you want to do something. So when you click on that, uh, first you name it, of course, but then you can choose triggers and it gives you ideas of ones. So these are kind of the most common ones, like when somebody submits a Microsoft Forms form uh, response. Um, that's a really good use case, I would say, for uh, Power Automate is if you create a Microsoft Forms form, which are super easy to create if you haven't tried that before, um, then you can set up a flow behind that so that when someone uh, fills out the form, then Power Automate will take all those responses and do something with them. So maybe depending on what they filled in on a certain field, you might want to do this or that different thing, or uh, you might just want to record all that data into a SharePoint list or an Excel uh, table row uh, and then do things with it later on or do things with it uh, just right within that flow. Then there are triggers like when a new item is created in SharePoint or when a task is assigned to you in Planner. So anything, um, a lot of 
most things that you can think of that might happen uh, within Microsoft 365 um, uh, services, especially, but but then also your um, your other third party things. Uh, and so you can choose one of these, but you can also just search all triggers. And notice again, you've got the little information icon here. So if you're not sure what that mean, what they mean by that, you can hover over that and it'll show you, it'll explain it, but you can probably guess that because it says the same thing pretty much. Um, but you can always click on the learn more. And again, I find this really useful, especially for learning new parts as um, then it'll take you to that part of the documentation and you can see what it needs. So it needs the form ID, which in you know, to create actually create the flow, it'll let you just go ahead and select that. So actually, let's just go ahead and do that one. So we'll do a demo form, just so I can show you what that trigger looks like, because it is a pretty common use case, I think. So if we create that flow, then it automatically will come up on the design canvas here. And so this is where I can um, create my flows and it comes up with that trigger and you can always see uh, what service the triggers and the actions are related to because they've all got an icon in the corner and they're usually colored you know sort of the color of that service um, so this is the forms color and it's wanting a form id and now i don't know off the top of my head the you know the long uh, GUID that is part of that creates form IDs, but it gives me a drop down, and that's normally the case in Power Automate. And it'll show me my uh, different forms that I have available in this tenant that I have access to. So uh, let's say we have a demo survey. And then always when you're using the forms trigger, and so this is. Um, Kind of a useful tip then the next step you have to do all that does is say when somebody has filled out this survey form then what so i need to tell power automate what to do next so i would click on the new step and this part might not be intuitive so that's why i'm explaining it to you um, the next thing you need to do is actually get that response from the the response that was filled in so i can search the connectors and actions i can search for forms so i'm i need to get that from microsoft forms and i can see that here's forms but there are other things that have to do that do different kinds of forms and so um, that's why power automate is suggesting some of those to me too but i want to actually use this get response details that's for microsoft forms and again, I could click on the I and get to the documentation for that if I need more information. But this is basically the thing that you can do with Microsoft Forms really is this action. That's the only one. And again, it wants the form ID. So that's the same form that we just chose just above. And then it wants the response ID. Now, I don't know uh, right now what you know which number of response that was that somebody sent in so what i can do here is just click into the field and then this is um, typically what will happen in any um, power automate action is when you click into a field of something you have to fill in you'll get choices based on the previous uh, in this case the trigger but if there were actions above it i would get choices based on those actions too so the only thing I can choose here is just response ID because that's really the only thing that comes out of that trigger. When a new response is submitted, the only thing you get back is the response ID and then you have to get these details. So I click on response ID and then that'll give me the details of that response. And then I probably want, so now I have the response, now I need to do actually do something with it and maybe I want to create an item in a SharePoint list so I can um, say well I want to do something with SharePoint and so I get my SharePoint choices and I can scroll down through here and as you saw on the documentation there are a lot of different things you can do with SharePoint but I want to create an item in a SharePoint list and so I would have had to already set up a SharePoint in this 
scenario. I would have had to already set up a SharePoint list that had columns that would correspond to the fields that people are filling out in that form, in this survey form. So I do have that. Um, and so if I go to the site address, it's in my demo, I believe. And it's, it was an ice cream survey, actually. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? And so it'll fill out, uh, or it'll then give me the fields that are in that list. So in the ice cream survey list that I had already created, there's a title because there always is. And so I have to put in here basically what part of the response from the form do I want to fill in on the title field in the SharePoint list? So let's say, I want to put the um, person's name that they entered as their name on the form. And then the ice cream flavor, obviously, I want to put their ice cream preference. So you can see over in this dynamic content, it's getting response details. Uh, these are the things that come out of that get response details action. So I'll put the ice cream preference. And then I don't need this acceptance value that was uh, I'll just say accept. Uh, and then that will create my item in the SharePoint list after that, um, whenever somebody fills out the uh, that survey form. So what I would want to do then is save. So after you've done what you want to do, and maybe I want to do more after that, you know, I could add things onto my flow. Like if the answer was vanilla, then I want to, maybe send them an email saying, yes, that's the right answer. Vanilla is the best <laughs> or something, you know, whatever. Um, so if I want to add something like that, let's just take a really quick look at some conditions. So if I go to control, then I can add things like conditions, which are, you know, if something equals or is greater than, it could be any sort of condition like that. I'll just pick that so you can see. So if some value is um, equal to something else, or let's see if I have to actually put something there, flavor, um, then I can choose things like, uh, if it was a number, I could choose like greater than or less than. So say, you know, maybe there was a, a dollar value field, then I could check, you know, if it's greater than 500, then I want this expense to go into an approval uh, cycle with my manager, if that's what you're creating a Power Automate flow to do. Um, or, and so you would put then the steps based on what your condition is, you would put different steps for if yes and different steps for if no. So just uh, that's a pretty basic thing that you might want to add to a flow to be able to, to automate those conditions. And again, if that assumes that, you know, there's something that you always want to happen in one case and always want to happen in the other case, and you don't have to intervene really then uh, to have that take place. I'm just going to delete that action because I don't really need it. And I'll go ahead and save my flow. And then there's this test function. Now I can't really test this one because um, I don't, you know, some somebody in this case has to actually trigger it by submitting the the form response. I'm going to just check and see. I don't remember if I, yeah. So I haven't run that. Well, this is a brand new flow, so never mind. <laughs> uh, I have run similar flows in the past, but uh, so I would have to fill out the form actually to get this to run, but let's go back and look at another flow that has run before. So let's say I have the um, new student notification. So in our last session uh, on Power Apps, we had a Power App that uh, let people see the um, some classes that were being uh, offered. And so if we just look, for example, this was the Power App. So it was a mobile app and it had these different classes that you could um, see the dates and times for, but you couldn't, uh, you didn't have anything in the app to sign up for them. But I've added that now. So if I click on the view item details, that just gives me the details of the class and I can now click on the register button and that will register me for that class. And basically what that's doing is using a Power Automate flow behind it to, uh, to register me for the class. And 
So I can go to this uh, class registration flow that I had created and let's go in and edit it so we can see what it's doing. There are just two steps. Um, so when you're using a flow from a Power App, basically what you do in the Power App is add an action, usually behind a button, because uh, that's usually the thing that, you know, you want somebody to click something to be able to, to uh, initiate a process. And uh, so we learned last time that that's the on select property of any sort of button or icon would be the, um, the thing that you um, would use to put the flow action behind. Uh, so I've got this Power Apps trigger and then it, I have it creating an item in the student registrations list. And it gets these different values from the Power App uh, that the, either based on the current user who is using the app in the case of the person's name and email, or in the case of the class they selected, it's based on the class they had selected in the app. So I can, uh, yeah, I know. I can test this now that it has run a couple times. So I just wanted to point out that when you're testing uh, a flow, it, once you've run it once, then you can use data from previous runs to test it again. So I wouldn't have to keep on going in and adding another person. Uh, so what I usually do when I'm creating flows is do them incrementally. So, you know, I know what I want to do overall, you know, I kind of design uh, my overall idea of what I, how I want the automate, how I want the flow to go. Um, but then I, add the steps one by one or you know maybe just a couple steps that I know will work um, and then test it to make sure that it works at least that far and often you know oftentimes and this is a little bit more of an advanced topic sometimes you need to you need to do that to see what comes out of certain steps so that you know what to add into the following steps but I can see that, yeah, this uh, succeeded one minute ago, so that was the one where I just now clicked register. So I can um, take a look at that. I could run that test again. So if I just click on it, then it'll ask me to, to save and test that. So that I would do that if I had come in here and made some little change, like maybe I decided I, I wanted to add in some text to the title or something like that in addition to what came from the Power App. And then I want to test it again, but I don't have to go back to the Power App and, and enter my data again. I can just use this save and test. Uh, so I'll just do that. So it's going to do that same exact data and it'll make another entry actually. Um, then I can, one thing I really like about Power Automate, another thing that I really like about Power Automate is that when a flow runs, you can see what it did in right in the UI. So I can see that it, um, I'm just doing a test here, but it still got that same data from the Power App um, as it had before. And it created the item. I see the little green check mark, which means that it was successful. And it says your flow ran successfully. If it didn't, I would see a little red X here and then I could figure out, um, it would show me an error message of some kind over to the right. And I would be able to see what it was I did wrong and you know what I need to change. So this is showing what it did when it created the item in the list and all of the different um, fields that it now exist in that list. So as you can see, the outputs, it shows me the inputs and the outputs all the time, always um, when you open this up after a flow has run. And I can see that, yes, it filled in my name and the class and my email, but it also has all of these other fields. These are the standard kind of built-in SharePoint list fields, like modified and created by and all of that sort of thing, identifiers and so on. So that is helpful to know because then that tells me now if I wanted to add another step that did something with that item that was created in the SharePoint list, I have all of these fields available to me now that I could do something with. Like if I wanted to make a notification uh, from an email that in an email, then I can do that because I've got all of that available to me. So that's my class registration flow. And I also just quickly wanted to look at um, another flow 
that is notifying. So we want to notify the instructor of that class that somebody has just registered. Now I could have just put that in the same flow, really, the class registration, um, but I wanted to show a different type of trigger, um, more of the uh, the automated trigger. This, this Power Apps one is one of the instant triggers because it's only triggers when you click on that registration button, whereas the new student notification is an automated trigger when an item is created in a SharePoint list. So when an item is created, and if you use that trigger, what you have to fill out is the name of the site. And again, this is all in a drop down, so you can just choose your, your site off of that. And then based on what you put in the site address it'll give you a list of all the lists that are available and that's an important thing to know about the SharePoint connector is I chose when an item is created which will reference SharePoint lists um, which include things like um, announcements and tasks and so on but if it was to do with documents, then I would need instead to use the SharePoint trigger when a file is created. And you'll see in the triggers and actions for SharePoint, there's a distinction between items and files. Items will always have to do with SharePoint lists, which includes Microsoft lists too, by the way. Um, and uh, files will always have to do with document libraries and documents. So I got my list name with student registrations. Um, and what I could do here too is I could do some, uh, you know, if I had a list that had a whole bunch of columns, I could set the view for that. But another thing I could do, which is a little beyond the scope of this, but just want to make you aware that it's available, is I could go kind of in the backstage of this trigger uh, under settings and I could set a condition. So there are trigger conditions and you, if you add one, you have to you have to know the OData filter syntax, which is uh, sometimes a little tricky, but, um, but there are resources available for that. But I could set a trigger condition, meaning maybe I don't need to run this flow every single time an item is created, but only if it's created on, with some certain value equals some other value. Um, so that way it doesn't even begin to run the flow unless that uh, is true. And I would say a trigger condition is also something that would be pretty useful if your trigger is on an email coming in because you might not even want the flow to even start running on every single email you get because if you're like me you get lots of junk email. Um, but maybe you only want it to trigger when you get an email from a certain person or when you get an email that says a certain thing in the subject line in this particular flow. Or, or when it has an attachment. Um, so that can all be, um, well, I don't know about the attachment, but the other things could all be part of the trigger condition. And that way it doesn't trigger on every single email, but only the ones that meet your condition. So then I wanted to, um, in this case, get who the instructor is for that class that the student just registered for. So I would use, I use the get items uh, SharePoint action and some of this is a little bit beyond getting started but I just wanted to show what's possible. Um, so the item, the new item was created in the student registrations list but I want to get the instructor name which was in the classes list, so a different list. Um, and I want to only get the item where the title, which was the um, in the classes list, the title is the name of the class, and where that equals the class that is coming in from the student registration list. So that filters out what I am getting from the classes list to only that class that the person is registered for, because that lets me get who's the instructor for that class and to do that, I had to use a, an expression because um, what that will give you, is, so when I choose get items, so again, this is a little bit conceptual, but um, it's important to understand because you will run into it, I think, <laughs> uh, even when you're just getting started. So if I choose the, there's a get item and there's a get items. And same with file and files, I believe. Uh, 
get items gets all of the items from a SharePoint list, but then I'm filtering it based on the title equaling the name of the class. But if I chose get item singular, it would need me to enter the item ID, like the SharePoint internal item ID, which might be three or five, or I don't know what that might be. So uh, or I don't know currently what that is. The flow doesn't know, I should say. Um, so I can't use the get item singular uh, action. I have to use the get items and filter it. But anytime you're using an action that has a plural on the end like that, what you end up with is a list of items. So in sort of programmer speak, that's an array. Um, and no matter what you do to filter it, you know, at this point, Flow still doesn't know, even though I've only got one class, one item for each class, Flow doesn't know that. So I've set my filter that title equals this class, but for all the flow knows that there could still be several rows that meet that filter. So if I went ahead and tried to uh, send an email notification, it would automatically put that into a loop and assume that I want to send an email for each instance of that. Now in this case, it would end up sending only one email anyway, but what you can also do is um, get just that single one by using a first expression. So I just want to use this to introduce expressions a little bit. Um, and also the compose action. Compose is something where you can basically create any type of data based on things that are in your flow. So I often use compose even just to see for sure, you know, just to double check what's in a certain value in the steps prior to it, and also, you know, making sure that I'm using the right um, fields coming out of some step before I go on to the next step. Um, so what I can do here is add an expression. So when I first add compose and click into here, it wants me to um, choose again. I could choose any of this dynamic content coming from the, the get items, but you can see that under get items, there's a list of items or this other list of items. Um, and so it's going to give me a list no matter what uh, I do. But if I chose just assigned coach, for example, which is what I'm after really, then it would put that whole thing into a loop and assume that, well, there's assigned coach for each of those um, items in the list. But if I want to use an expression, uh, so I just want to show how to do that, the expressions are here and I can. Uh, there are string, which means text. There are collection expressions, which has to do with arrays, logical things, and conversion, math, date, time, and so on. And each of these has actually a lot more. So under the collection, which has to do with arrays, and that's what I'm dealing with here, I can click see more. So always notice that. And then I can see all of the expressions that are available to me on the um, uh, having to do with collections. And if I choose that I just want the first item, I'm trying to pull out the first item from that list, even though there's only one, <laughs> then I can just click on the function and then it needs me to fill in something in the parentheses. And then I can, right from here, I can click on dynamic content and fill in what I want to get. So I want to use this value and then I have to, and this part is is the part that you can't really do um, quite easily. So I've that's why I've copied the expression I ended up with because I want to get the email of the assigned coach. Um, and I've copied that into a comment here so that I can remember to myself, yeah, that's what I did. So I'm going to cancel out here. But I, so that again, a little bit beyond um, getting started but I just wanted to show you the kinds of things that are possible and then I want to send an email to that person so I can just use the output of that compose as I had changed that back so I just use the output of the compose and click dynamic content in this case and get the output of that and so then that'll fill in whoever's email it was so 
depending on which class it was. Um, and I wanted to show how in the send an email action, which is also a really common one that you'd probably want to do, uh, you can use both the dynamic content tokens coming from any step above where you are and also just plain text. So I could put, you know, fill in my subject line, new student for such and such a class. And then obviously I can make them nicer looking email, but uh, this would have the student name in it, which was my title field of the SharePoint list, has registered for your class, whatever. And I can use HTML in here, I can use the rich text um, field um, ribbon buttons there uh, to create a really nice looking email. And the one other thing I just want to point out about sending an email, because again, you probably will want to use that pretty often, is that normally you'll want to set the importance uh, to normal because by default, I believe it's still true that that's low importance and you normally want it to be normal or high possibly. And so that I think gives you some ideas of um, things that you can do with Power Automate and also some, you know, a few tips on how to work with creating flows. So I hope that's helpful. Are there, do we have any questions, Brett? Not just yet, but uh, okay. yeah, if you, if, if you do have any questions, then uh, feel free to post them in the question uh, pane and uh, I'll uh, read those out or if you prefer uh, you can also uh, raise your hand and I'll unmute you and you can read your question out. Or you can also feel free to yeah, email me if you think of your questions later. <laughs> There's my email on the screen. Yeah and uh, just whilst we're waiting for people to uh, post those questions I've um, just put in the chat window as well our next webinar which is uh, you, you can register for by clicking on the link and that's going to be on the 3rd of December and uh, it'll be myself and we'll be talking about uh, getting started with Power BI. So continuing with the trend of the, the, the Power Platform. Uh, but uh, yeah, first bit of feedback has just come back from, uh, it's not really a question, but um, Paul has just said very helpful, thank you. Uh, I know there is a question. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you, Paul, as well. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, we do have a question from Tim. So in terms of licensing, does the user need to have an Office 365 license to interact with Flow or is a license only needed to create a Flow? Um, so to interact with the Flow, meaning like getting an email from the Flow or something, no, they would not need to have a Flow license for that. But as I said, it's included in your Microsoft 365 uh, license. So um, anybody who is a user in your tenant will would actually be able to create flows as well but but yes to create flows you need the flow license that's either included with the tenant or uh, as i said if your organization has maybe turned that off as a default um then then yeah it would need to be turned on for the people who want to create the flows but um but like a person adding an item to a sharepoint list and then um having that trigger a flow that person adding the item would not have to have a flow license specifically. If they want to be able to use um, a, an instant flow like on where you can set up a flow that you select an item in a SharePoint list or a file in a document library and then run a flow on it to run that flow then yes the, that person would have to have a flow license but, but again it's the one that's included with Microsoft 365. Excellent. Yeah. So it looks like that answered uh, Tim's question. He's given you the fantastic okay. thanks. So <laughs> that's okay. great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just a bit of feedback uh, as well. Um, so is, is there, uh, so it's so a great session and is there a, any session for a deeper dive on Power Automate? So um, huh? I think, yeah, uh, not at the moment. Uh, we're, we're not scheduling that, but um, yeah, I, I think there was plenty of resources that you mentioned there, Sandy. Uh, did you want to repeat any of those? Uh, yeah, so I would, yeah, none of them would necessarily be a deeper dive, but I, again, I would recommend John Levesque's YouTube, YouTube channel because he does have um, the um, different levels of Power Automate, and those are usually like 15 to 30 minute videos, um, something like that. But a deeper dive webinar, I'm certainly open to that suggestion too. Excellent. All right. Well, looks like uh, that's all the questions at the moment. But um, 
yeah, okay. I'll, I'll let you wrap it up. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for attending and I hope this does help you get started with Power Automate if you hadn't yet tried it and uh, maybe gave you some additional tips if you have tried it and just needed to, to go a little bit further. So um, again, feel free to email me um, probably at my Enlightening email address uh, so it doesn't get lost in my Lightning Tools ones. Uh, more to do with Power Platform. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to answer any questions or yeah, if you're interested in actual um, coaching, then of course um, that's what Enlightening is here for too. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sandy. That was great. And thank you, everybody, for, uh, for attending. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye.